We all know what hell is like. When you hear the word, you'd probably think of a fiery pit, a sea of corpses, a bloody battlefield, an office, the cashier stand at McDonald, or the Jehovah Witness who is always climbing outside your window. But I want to share with you my version of hell and why I think it's a little more than just suffering. The original definition of hell is that it is a place of concentrated suffering. There's nothing wrong with this definition, but I believe it only half of what hell really is. Hell also contains other things that are not suffering, and that might include things that we don't often regard as hell. It might include things things that we might never ever associate with the pit of fire in the Bible. This governing force of nature might be more fundamental than you think, although only in a relative sense. I know I said that suffering is not fundamental, but nature is perfectly capable of creating confined spaces and conditions where it can become fundamental, even if it is ultimately an illusion. So here's what I believe to be the true definition of hell. Hell is the complete opposite of absolute infinity. It is everything that isn't absolutely infinite. Every thought, every emotion, every attribute, every concept, every form of existence is a variation of hell itself. If you're experiencing a thought or a passing moment of your day-to-day -day existence that isn't about the recognition of the absolute infinity or the all, then you would be in hell. Even the concept or the experience of oneness with everything, the experience of absolute nothingness, where existence becomes whole, perfect, and temporary disappears is a way of hell trying to become something that it is not which is absolute infinity but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't pursue this state of non-dual awareness hell is all that is finite but different degrees of hell and happiness can still be found here. The attributes of happiness, bliss, peace, oneness are the few of the things that hell borrowed from absolute infinity to convince itself of the fact that it can never become its opposite, that it is finite and not the whole. Because if that was true, nothing would ever exist. All things that can exist must be finite in one way or another. Space can be infinite, but it's still finite because there exist other infinite things that aren't space. A thought or an experience of the all is when hell temporarily denies itself and creates an illusion where it can pretend to become one with its opposite. This is why every passing moment of your existence counts. The more you can be aware of the everythingness, either through concept, direct experience, or other means, the more bliss you will experience, and the smaller the degree of hell will become. At some point, the percentage of hell will be so small that you won't even know that it exists. Yet at the same time, everything in this world is hell, and it is eternal. That's the rule. You only either exist and be separate from everything else, or don't exist at all. But when you realize you're stuck in a dream and you can't wake up, would you rather go to Disneyland and have a good time, or would you rather go to the concentration camp